Hello, my name is Clem McDonald, continuing the Visual Basic tutorial series. In this particular tutorial, we're going to look at code file layout and style guides. And we're going to look at why do we need these things and how can we make our code cleaner and easier to read, uh, add effective commenting and grouping. Sometimes as you start programming, you have very small programs and the organization of it doesn't matter too much but as your programs grow the organization of your code becomes very important visual studio has all kinds of great tools built into it to go to go to code that's been defined or referenced or those kind of things but that doesn't replace having good clean code layout and so we're going to look at a few things and a few ideas today is in how to organize your code so let's bring up Visual Studio and I've already got a project loaded up here and this is a little battleship type of a game that I created in Visual Basic and what you look at is here is not necessarily the game itself but looking at the code so when you look at the code for this game you can see that there's a lot of procedures a lot of routines and a lot of things in here 370 lines of code and when you're trying to debug it or work it or make a small change, trying to find what you're actually going for and where you need to look is sometimes challenging. So we're going to look at a few ways to organize the code. So first things first, you're going to have the top of the code here. One of the first things you need is you have to have a comment header in every file. The comment header gives the next person who's working on your project a an idea of who did this who to talk to if they have questions and what information is important so you're gonna have to have information like the author the date it was created the date it was created so we're gonna have to have a purpose Now, this, I'm just typing something really quick here, just not to take up too much time typing, and, and a description of uh, what is trying to be accomplished. As you edit your code, you're also going to have um, changes. So you're going to have a, a change log here, and in the change log, you're going to say who made the law, who made the change. Who edited it, etc. So that's first step. Put a comment header up first. Visual Studio allows you to minimize it so it's not in the way when you're writing it and go from there. Next, put all your constants and global variable declarations right at the top of the, pro of the file. When you get more advanced, you'll find other places to store this information. Um, but when you're learning, put all your constants and global variables at the top. And then you can go ahead and start working on your things. Now as you can see here I've got lots of different ideas and concepts that are here and it's an idea that let's gather like things and group them together. So we're going to introduce you to a little concept called regions. So when we have these we can create a region and a region is defined by hashtag region and then putting in uh, quotes the name of the region. So we're going to call this constants and global variables okay and then ignore that the dashes are just for decoration purposes so that it differentiates that between other areas that I've minimized and a regional uh, area so once I have the region I can just take that code drag it into the region and now we have our code individualized and add a space here just to space it out a little that looks cleaner and now I can actually hit this, minimize that, and all my constants and global variable declarations are now placed inside of an area that's collapsible. And that makes us our organization very well. Now what we can do is we can add additional regions, and some of these regions will be your program specific, and you're going to have to come up with what your regional groups are going to be. So how are you going to group your different procedures, your routines, your functions, your uh, event handlers, all that. How are you going to group it? Uh, I'll show you how I've grouped mine here and then you can take my example and then create your own based on a sample. So here we're going to do uh, an, uh, a region for enums. 
Enums, I actually use them quite a bit in my programming. They're, they come in very handy and it allows you to create strongly typed code um, with very little effort. So I usually have an enum section. Um, so there's my enum section. And then what you're going to have is most projects have some kind of startup and initialization where you sort of set the default values, you set up any arrays or loops or functions or data sources or any of those kind of things that you have within an application. And it comes to reason that the form load uh, event handler would be in the startup and initialization things. This is a, a subroutine which allows me to set up my data grid view. So I'm going to put that in my initialization because this is one that I may reference it again later. As you can see, I've got two references to it already. Um, but it definitely is something that's run when you first set it up. Uh, set up the star pattern. This is for the graphics in the game. So I'm just going to throw that in there. Uh, resetting the grid. Is that an initialization uh, routine or not? Not quite sure. So I'm going to leave that out for now. We won't put that into initialization. So we'll go down here. These are all populate things and setting things up. So we'll leave them as it is for now. All right, so let's go ahead and we can collapse the startup and initialization. And now we'll create another region. Uh, this region will, why don't we just call this the reset and populate or um, display uh, root procedures. So the display procedures would be user interface display procedures and those kind of things. So when we reset the grid, that's going to be in there. We're going to reset it. it means we're wiping it out, creating a new one. Uh, populating the data grid. We'll throw that up in there. Uh, populating the data text grid. That sounds like uni uh, user interface. So we'll throw all that in there. Reset the grid. Populate the data grid. Um, populate data grid images. Uh, so that would be user interface. So collapse that up. Uh, set the grid values. This is actually part of setting up a two-dimensional array for the grid values. So this actually may go into startup and initialization. So we can throw this in here. So as you can see, it doesn't matter that you didn't do it the first time. You can add it later. So go ahead and throw that in there. And now it looks like fire shot. It looks like we may be into a new region that we want to start. And we'll call this region gameplay. Right. And so we can collapse up that region there. <clears throat> you can see here I didn't have my spacing on my name consistent here, so I'm actually going to remove a space from there. There we go. Now my names are consistent. Looks like it wasn't consistent here, so let's remove a space there. And now we can take this fire shot procedure, throw that in there, and then set the planets. Okay. That's probably part of gameplay. Again, we're just gonna and we're gonna put a space between everything here because it's really important to um, keep things separate. Now, looking through this, it looks like we have a whole bunch of event handlers now. So here's button clicks, button clicks, button clicks, uh, a picture box click, another click. Uh, here's check boxes, data grid view cell clicks. So these are all event handlers here. So we're going to create a new little region here for event handlers. And most of the time these are going to be button clicks and those kind of things. So we're just going to grab all this, these button clicks and all these event handlers that are here. Looks like the end right there. So we'll throw those into the region here. So they're all grouped together. So we have a good idea where things are. And we can shrink all this stuff down. Get an extra space in there. And now it looks like we've got functions and business logic. So get planet count is there? Are they destroyed? Get the destroyed counts. So we can add one more region here called um, uh, custom functions. And there we go. So we'll just grab these functions that we have here, and we'll throw them into the custom functions. We'll remove some spaces here. And now you can see that our entire line of code, and we've added some lines of code, so we're up to 400 now, but our entire project code file now is 
clean, consistent, and going from there. Another thing that's really useful in Visual Studio and in Visual Basic is the ability to add automated coding. And you can see here that I've added some commenting before, and this summary allows me to actually create IntelliSense on the fly. So what you should do is for each procedure that you have, it is really, uh, it's really um, uh, recommended that you use automated code generation. And if you put three single quotes there and then hit the enter key, it will create a summary for you already. So you can create this, and I can say uh, uh, pr procedure to um, initialize the data grid view and set its defaults. And that's just a quick example here. And you can actually collapse the comments as well and then collapse the item, so it works out nicely there. The other thing that you can do is you can also, if you do automated commenting on a procedure that has input variables, it actually gives you parameter names here. And this, you can actually put some co um, comments in there the, um, that allow you to use IntelliSense to see these later. So you can put this um, information in there. So. Uh, so I'm just going to put uh, some comments in here. So you can see there very quickly that I add some comments in there. And what's really cool is if I just go here quickly, I can say call um, set call set grid value, okay? And as I do call set grid value, you can see that the IntelliSense right here is showing me what I typed in. So the IntelliSense is I'm actually setting that up by doing automated uh, commenting in here. And that really, really helps. So something that I, when I teach, I enforce that this automated commenting must be on every single procedure. And it doesn't take that long to do it. And it really would help the next person who comes along who needs to modify your code to see what you're attempting to do, to see where things are, what procedures are meant to do what and how they're used. And you can also add modifications commenting within those code, those commenting structures. So it's really important to um, look at that and to understand what you're trying to do. So really quickly, make sure that you have consistent code formatting, etc. The last thing I want to look at is a particular example of a style guide. So for instance, you want to have a, a very specific case sensitivity or style guide with respect to local variables, global variables, constants, procedures, etc. And here's one that's a very typical one that's used a lot. Every company that produces software will have their own style guide and as long as they're consistent that's fine. And making sure that you can look at things. So for instance you'll notice that in my code I leave the me um, declaration in front of all my form controls and Visual Studio says I don't need that go ahead and remove it I leave it there anyways because that differentiates a form control from a variable or a subroutine procedure and I can very quickly see that anything with a me in front of it is a form control and that makes my code much more readable and I can differentiate between things with an instant view of what's there and as you can see here from this Excel spreadsheet I created, local variables, Pascal case, procedures, Camel case, and I've given examples here. So you can pause the video and look at this in your own at your own time, but here's a really good starting point for a style guide. Style guides are typically three pages long with a lot more detail than this. This is a really good starting point, just to give you an idea. Thank you very much.